Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to support the proposed amendment to the bill presented by the Minister for Home Affairs and Parliamentary Representative for Miku North. Uh, Mr. Speaker, there's a very nice ring to it when you call the minister by name and then the portfolio follows. <laughs> I was visited by the minister on the weekend with two of his children. And the younger of the two, Mr. Speaker, when I asked what is your father's role in government, he wasted no time telling me that his father was the Minister for Home Affairs, Crime Prevention, and Persons with Disability. And I went further to ask him, Mr. Speaker, what do you want to, and the teacher in me asked, what do you want to become when you grow up? He said to me he wants to be a politician. <laughs> um, Mr. Speaker, it's really nice to see that um, the work of the St. Lucia Labour Party is attracting people as young as five to want to join the struggle to make a difference in this country. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I rise to support the, the amendment as proposed, but I want to crave your indulgence to express condolences to the family of David Lerich, who was in his early 30s, and at the time of his passing, Mr. Speaker, he served as the caretaker at the Olean Combined School. I spoke with David um, a few weeks ago. He was in good spirit. He was healthy. Um, but just a few days ago, he, Mr. Speaker, as we'd say in, in, in community palace, he wasn't feeling himself. Um, he was taken to the hospital, and shortly thereafter, he met his demise. Mr. Speaker, I want to go further than what has been presented here by the, minister, the line minister and the deputy prime minister's contribution, the prime minister himself and the member for Freeport North, and speak of the need, or, or should I say, speak of my support to amend the citizenship um, legislation in our country today. Mr. Speaker, they have provided all the reasons that would have informed the decision of the government to make the change. But I want to go further, Mr. Speaker, and make a pitch for a number of persons in St. Lucia who have been living here for quite some time, Mr. Speaker, and they have not been regularized. And I have quite a few in my own constituency, and I think of, of Sean Pierre, Sean Pierre, who resides in Olio, and he's been in St. Lucia since 1994. 30 years later, Mr. Speaker, he has not been regularized. He works in the construction sector. He's involved in the building of houses, um, road construction, and he's making a very productive and, and, and positive contribution to the development of the community and by extension, our country. But Mr. Speaker, from 1994 to 2024, 30 years thereafter, he does not have citizenship and the process is proving to be quite cumbersome. And in the spirit of all that has been said as it relates to regional integration and the free movement of people, Mr. Speaker, I believe the time has come for us to further amend the legislation or put certain procedures in place, if not informed by legislation, but by the daily operations of the line agencies to help regularize individuals like Sean Pierre, who, hailed from, who hails from Trinidad, and 30 years living in Olio, he still does not have um, anything that he can speak to by way of citizenship. Mr. Speaker, there's another one in my constituency by the name of Bess, who resides in Tamazo, a very accomplished mechanic. He and his family, they've been here for a while, and like shown in Olio, it is proven to be extremely difficult for them to get um, citizenship. And perhaps the most glaring example in the constituency as we speak is a young man by the name of Kenroy, who resides in New Village, Richmond. Kenroy has been in St. Lucia for almost two decades, Mr. Speaker. He works. He is now a father in the community. He participates in the domestic football program, um, both in community and at the national level. And after so many years in St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker, he's just existing in the constituency, not having the requisite documentation that could cause him to, to access legitimately all the services that are provided by the state to the citizens. So, Mr. Speaker, I know the, 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 the proposed amendment does not deal with some of the cases that I've just cited, but I'm saying it has become necessary for us to take the conversation further. And given my initial exchanges with the line minister, I am sure, if not by way of the legislation being amended, that in the daily operations of the Department of Home Affairs, that something can be done to assist the individuals I've mentioned and the hundreds of others we have, not just in Denrinov, but in, 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 in St. Lucia as a whole. Mr. Speaker, I follow international sport very, very closely. 
and the debate always um, is always ongoing in terms of who should be representing which country. And the Prime Minister in his presentation cited the um, young Lawrenson, who is a very promising athlete who has expressed an interest in representing St. Lucia um, in international competition. Mr. Speaker, she is world class and she has proven time and again that she is a serious contender for an Olympic medal. And if given an opportunity to represent St. Lucia, I have absolutely no doubt that in tandem with the exploits of, of Julian Alfred, that St. Lucia can possibly receive two medals at the Olympics. You look at the France football team in Europe, Mr. Speaker, and when you, you, you study the background of the players who make up the French national football team, you will find that at least 80 to 95% of them are from Africa by way, Mr. Speaker, of connection with their parents and whatnot. And, and I know in, in the UK in particular, when I was the minister responsible for youth development and sports, there were a number of footballers who were playing, at least at foot division level in the UK, who were expressing an interest to represent St. Lucia. But I do not believe at the time that the legislation would have permitted for a lot of them um, to have made themselves available. So what we see happening, quite apart from regularizing some of the, the irregularities that may exist, we are also, Mr. Speaker, creating a pathway where we can tap into St. Lucian talent that exists beyond the shores to come and represent our country at the highest international levels. So, Mr. Speaker, with this very brief um, contribution, I say I support the amendment as proposed and as expertly presented by the Minister for Home Affairs, um, Crime Prevention, and Persons with Disabilities, and Member for Mikunov. Mr. Speaker, I'm going to say that I support Même quand toutes ces membres qui ont parlé avant moi, um, décision gouvernement Japon pour ça ranger loi qui a gouverné de manière mon qui venir citoyen pays. A. Et moi dit tout à l'heure là dans mon plusieurs monde en constituant moi. Malgré ça nous regarder hors de la paca adresser situation yo um, directement. Mais là il y a pile monde qui a resté de leur constituant moi qui sortit en l'autre place Kawaii là. Et à delà pour um, à peu près 30 l'année, 20 l'année, 25 l'année. Et tout le temps, ça, Mr. Speaker, vous avez la communauté, vous avez la communauté, et puis madame, vous avez fait l'ish, vous avez fait le football, vous avez planté le jardin, vous avez fait le travail, mais vous n'avez pas de pièces de documents, vous avez fait le travail pour dire que c'est citoyen pays. Et je pense que si vous avez fait le travail pour autant de temps, Mr. Speaker, et considérez tout ça, nous avons dit, à propos de nous voulons faire un um, Caraïbes, que tout le monde a voyagé dans tout le pays sans difficulté, les agents viennent pour nous commencer à garder amendement or changement pour legislation now ki ka ale pli loin parce que ça nous ka parler hodi a pou bay ces moun sa la um, an opportunité pou sa yo ka fè se bagay ki 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 legal et puis yo ka tabe ko yo embrasser en society de manière que nous ka di nous apprécier contribution yo ka fè comme dit yo a fait ish yo ka travail et yo ka fait un bon contribution pour développement commun and by extension the development of our country and so mr speaker with this very brief um contribution, I support the amendment as proposed.